today we're going to take a walk to the Proven Winners Signature Garden here at Garden Crossings. Hi, I'm Heidi. It is the middle of September right now. And even though there's a lot of things that are starting to look a little bit tired, there's still a lot of fabulous color going on right now in these gardens. Speaking of fabulous color, what do you think about this quick fire fab hydrangea? This is really just probably in addition to firelight, which many of you know is one of my favorites. This is a gorgeous looking hydrangea right now. I am loving the bright magenta coloration there on the blooms and it's been holding its color really nice for probably about the last month or so. I'm sure if I go up and touch the flowers, they're going to feel dry, which that's what I would expect for this time of year, but gorgeous, gorgeous color right now. We're starting to get rained on, so we'll see if this is like a legit rain, which <laughs> the clouds are looking pretty um, ominous. So I think we will continue this after the rain and hopefully this rain stops soon. So I think the rain has stopped for now. We'll see. So we'll continue on through this tour. So we had just talked about that quick fire fab that is absolutely breathtaking the color right now this time of year. We're going to make our way around the garden and just for look, just look for certain things that have interesting points of interest. I think at this point, uh, this here is the cornice arctic fire and this plant right now does not look like much but this is going to be a great plant once winter comes it's going to have bright red twigs uh, its name is also the red twig dogwood and the thing i'm liking is these twigs are really pretty long right now so this is going to be great to give me some really um, tall height of the red twigs in my winter porch pots one thing i am noticing on this plant right now though is there are caterpillars on it and they're not the friendly catechet kind of caterpillars. Um, to be honest, I'm not even sure what they are, but they are ugly and they are chewing on this plant. So these, I'm pretty sure, are not the friendly kind of caterpillars we want. But whatever, I'm growing this plant for the red twigs of the winter interest. So we'll see how that problem escalates as we go on through the fall this is honestly the first time i've ever noticed caterpillars on there and we've grown these plants for quite some time so i'll have to probably google what that caterpillar is and see um but next as we make our way around we've got some yellow twigs from the yellow twig dogwood you can see the yellow twig dogwood has more of a sprawling low growing type habit i don't love the habit of the yellow twig dogwood uh, but just to have a little bit of those yellow twigs for my winter pots is the reason why we grow this particular plant. Uh, this one too, I'm seeing caterpillars all over all of these cornice. So definitely that's something I'm gonna have to investigate. As I'm getting closer though, I see a really cute little garden friend. Come here and take a closer look. It is an absolutely beautiful frog. So much pretty color. Oh, he just went away. Oh, I hope we got it. That was, I don't know, that was a really pretty colorful frog that I've not seen before. Making our way through the garden, the Supertunia Vista bubblegum, it has rained here for the past day and a half, so things look like they've been kind of downpoured on, and it's because they have. Uh, but the bubblegum still is giving quite a lot of color out in the garden, so we'll probably leave these for another week or two as long as they're kind of looking like this. But once they start looking really tired, we'll go ahead and rip all of these petunias out. Uh, the butterfly bush, those are still doing great. We're gonna actually, we'll come across those as we get up into the garden so we can sit, uh, show you closer. The proud berry, that is one of those shrubs that I think is like not talked about enough. Beautiful, beautiful pink berries great late summer interest and those berries usually will last well into the fall and into the winter uh, so just a shrub that kind of takes you from that late season garden into your winter garden phlox is blooming nice right now that's the luminary opalescent phlox it's a tall phlox uh, the nice thing with the proven winners luminary series of phlox is they're very clean uh, we generally don't have many issues with powdery mildew on them so that's looking super good right now so we do have the butterfly garden around here for the monarch butterflies and there is a lot of milkweed in all of our gardens and this variety here is coming into its own right now and i just i love 
<laughs> I love the texture. I love, I just love the look of the plant. And I'm gonna say it, it's Asclepius hairy balls. Uh, once the flowers are done flowering, you get these giant um, balls on the plant and that's what holds the seeds uh, for, that we harvest for the next season plant. These aren't hardy here in Michigan. We're zone 5B, 6A, um, but I love the interest they bring to the garden. A lot of foliage, so that's a lot of food for those monarchs. Uh, and then too, we'll go and harvest those seeds for next year's crop of Asclepius. The Caryopteris is blooming right now. We've got the Caryopteris Sunshine Blue too, which is beautiful chartreuse yellow foliage, nice uh, purple flowers on it. Uh, behind the Sunshine Blue too, we've got two of the Beyond Midnight, which are also Caryopteris or Bluebeards, and they've got great purple blue foliage, and that's a shrub that comes into its color in late summer. So most shrubs, you know, by late summer they're kind of done the caryopteris are just starting to color up we've got the salvia uh, annuals are still doing great with those tall purple spikes uh, the stokesia which a lot of you are really interested in, in last video they are now starting to kind of be on their downward side of flowering there is a monarch butterfly in it right now enjoying the plant though We've got this Lobelia Vulcan Red, and this is one people had asked me about in the last video because I kind of just skipped over it. Sometimes I do that because there's so many plants to talk about, um, but great dark foliage and beautiful red blooms. Got the Spirea Candy Corn with this yellow foliage with the beautiful red tips on it. Uh, in the back are the Firelight Tidbits. They're kind of done for the season, kind of going into their brown stage. Up front here though, again remember I said it had just you know it's rained the last few days um, but the mini vista white and the mini vista midnight did fabulous this year creating just a beautiful vibrant mass of color and again like I said the salvia that's one plant that is just incredible what that has done here in the garden as we walk up and through the garden we'll be able to see a few things more closely that we've talked about the front planting here in the garden is the Supertunia uh, Vista Paradise along with the Nemesia Aromance Mulberry. And those did fabulous this summer. I'm really, really pleased with how they've done and just the amount of color and vibrancy that they've added to this bed. We've got a lot of butterfly bush up on the top here. This here is the Pugster Blue. There's a grouping of three of them there. And as I stand up here on the top of this garden, there's just so much fragrance right now. Uh, and it's coming from those butterfly bush. We also on the side over here have a grouping of the Pugster Pinker butterfly bush. And these Pugster butterfly bush, they only get about two foot tall or so. So they're really nice for those more smaller, compact areas in your garden and they bloom for a long time as well. So it's, it's a shrub that does give you almost, we could say months of color. Verbena, Verbena meteor showers, doing beautiful. That's the plant, it's a must have plant, especially if you're looking to create like a butterfly oasis. And looking at the garden from this angle, the sedum lemon coral, I think that needs to be spoken of as well. That is an annual, uh, sedum and it's just it gives that vibrant splash of yellow chartreuse that just really I think kind of draws the eye into this garden we have it purposefully placed there above that rock wall so I think it's just it's one of those plants that just draws you in to the beauty that is behind it next we're going to head on over to the sign garden and just do a real quick look there because the plants there are doing really well here too for September uh, the plants that we have in there are the Sun Patience uh, Purple, the Lemon Coral Sedum, and then the Mini Vista White Supertunias. And as you can see from where we're standing here, just a vibrant mass of color that has done very well for us this summer. As we stand here in the middle of the drive, as you pull into the garden center here at Garden Crossings, this is what you're seeing. So the Bobo Hydrangeas, they have been just spectacular from about I would say end of July uh, until now you can see now they're kind of going to their faded state 
Uh, we've got the Super Tunia Mini Vista hot pink petunias in those gardens, Super Tunia Mini Vista white, and more Verbena meteor showers. So we just love that combination, and those bobos are the perfect size for those island beds. Not too big, not too tall, but really just a very fun, welcoming plant as people come to the garden center. So Garden Crossings is located in Zeeland, Michigan with our retail garden center. Uh, we also do mail order, so we ship plants all over the United States. So if any of these plants that you're seeing today uh, you're interested in, you can head to our website at gardencrossings.com. So let's continue to look at, uh, at more gardens and more flowers. We're here at the Waterfall Garden, and this garden has done just fabulous this year. There's so many things that I'm taking notes on of things we need to do the same for next year. Um, I don't have many notes of things that I don't want to do for next year, so that's always good when you plant something and you're just really happy with how it turned out. This little area of the garden, these annuals have done just fabulous. And it's kind of more of a patchwork feel uh, with the planting here. It's mass, but it's also patchy. Uh, and what do we have? We have the coleus lime thyme. It's done gorgeous. Coleus torchlight, also done very well. The beautiful white begonias there are the surefire white begonias. We have surefire cherry cordial on either side. Lining the front uh, are the Argeratum uh, artist purple or artist blue. We've got a few of the diamond mountain in here, which just add a little bit of that wispy, light, airy feel. And again, sun patience. We do so much with sun patience because they're just, they're so easy to grow. Uh, they do like water but they're just so easy to grow and the color they give is just unlike many other things. So really a fun little area. In the back there, we have the purple fountain grass and that's just kind of waving in the wind and I love the motion that that adds to the garden. Just beyond that purple fountain grass though, you're seeing even more plumes of kind of a wispy feathery uh, grass in the breeze. And that actually is the Penicetum puppy love. And I love the, I love the flower plumes of the Penicetum puppy love. The plant gets about three and a half, maybe four foot tall. And it's just, it's such a light, airy, fun feel to add into the garden. So this garden bed, you can walk either from the base down here or you can walk up and around and through. So you can kind of see it from uh, two different sides. Making our way through, this is a lot of repeat of the annuals we've already seen. And again, they're all doing just fabulous. The coleus are almost three foot tall, which is just crazy. Waterfall bed has just filled out amazing. There's certain points in the season where I would say, I don't know if I really like this or like that. Um, in particular, I really wasn't sure that I loved that center part between the waterfall. But wow, now that it's fall, that has filled in and not a lot of color. It's, it's kind of lacking of color. But the plants that are in it have done fabulous. And then of course, the sun credible sunflowers, they just add such a cheery little bit of sunshine to the garden bed. And that's just a staple plant that we like to plant up there every year because there's nothing better than sunflowers. Here's another mass planting of the cherry cordial, uh, surefire cherry cordial begonias. Done really well. Uh, tucked in and around, you'll see some little splashes of purple. That's the Blue Chip Junior Butterfly Bush, which is great for all these butterflies we've been releasing. And if we look up on top of the pergola there, those Super Tunia Jazzberries did fabulous. You see a little bit of dangling coming through, and that's the um, big leaf vine and we added that just to give a little bit of a light airy dangle going on in that pergola. Uh, there also was Supertunia mini vista white planted with that jazzberry but obviously jazzberry has won. The sun's come out a little bit through the clouds this feels really nice it's actually been kind of cold here today I mean I'm gonna say cold not really but colder than what it's been and right now we're at the 55 mile an hour garden and the Super Tunia Vista Jazzberries are doing phenomenal yet. Up in front though we have the Macedonia Gold Dust which 
was a little bit deeper gold, golden yellow than my shirt. And that plant has done fabulous all summer. Right now, it's looking a little tired. And I think the reason is, is because like I said, it's getting a little bit colder now that it's fall. So it just doesn't have those hot summer nights that it needs to keep the flowers just going like they were doing earlier in the season. That's not a problem though. This plant has outdid itself this year and I've been very pleased. On the other side of the split rail fence, there's a lot again of the some credible sunflowers, which we did that to kind of tie into that gold dust. The two yellows really complemented each other nicely. Um, also, we had some leftover of the white sun patients. So we just lined this whole fence row with the white sun patients. And I think that looks really nice with that white fence. Uh, we also have shrubs planted in there, but because the shrubs are still fairly small, they're not doing a whole lot yet for color. So that's why we really packed the annuals in here so that we would have some consistent color going on in this garden. Uh, so probably next year, the shrubs will be just a little bit more uh, bigger, more filled out, more mature, that we're going to see more coloration going on. But there's butterfly bush in here, arborvitaes, Rosa Sharon, some hydrangeas. So I think next year we'll be really happy with the size and the state of the shrubs. Uh, that goes to show, you know, when you're planting your garden, it's not going to be an overnight thing. You got to kind of let your garden grow into itself. And that space definitely is one that we're just waiting for it to grow into itself. And it's doing a good job. Garden bed behind us here was a struggle for the past few years. So this is the third year this bed has been here and I think it's finally, it's finally kind of coming into its own as well. Uh, we're still, you know, maybe lacking a little bit on fall color. So maybe we need to think of uh, doing more for fall color in this bed. Um, I do know the gardeners are going to be planting mums out here at some point. So that will help with some fall color, uh, but plants that are doing good. The lantana, this has done fabulous out in this garden. Uh, typically, we don't do a lot with lantana, but I'm loving the mass planting that was done this year. The nice mounding habits, a great plant for the butterflies um, that we were introducing into the beds. It um, does look like there's a couple mums planted, but I think what's gonna happen is that I think we're gonna plant a whole row of mums in here, so it'll just be like a solid, massive fall color going on. Uh, we've got some Veronica still blooming. Here we have the Magic Show's Purple Illusion. That was trimmed back and it's coming back just like it did this spring. Just a nice mass of color. Uh, so beautiful. There's three of them there. The lantana is kind of covering it up a little bit. But those blooms are coming back beautiful um, after a nice trim. That's one thing people do also ask is, you know, when do we trim our perennials? So if your perennials are kind of done flowering, go ahead and give them a light trim because I think, you know, for many perennials, you might be rewarded with secondary uh, cycle of blooms, which is really exciting when that happens. Here's kind of a unique coneflower to point out. This is a grouping of three of the green jewel coneflower. And these actually have like chartreuse green flowers on them. So definitely not a typical color when you're thinking of coneflowers but definitely kind of a unique plant uh, to add into the garden. Monarda is typically a June bloomer here in Michigan. These were all trimmed back and you can see how they have kind of rewarded us with some secondary late summer blooms. So that's fun to see. The lavender is doing really well. That's the sweet romance lavender. And even this bed here of coneflowers, we just have a whole bunch of different mixed and matched coneflowers because I love the look of just all different coneflowers together. Like if you can create a mass planting of something, I love mass planting of coneflowers. So they're still holding on pretty good late in the season. Some of them are getting a little brown and a little tired, but still we're seeing quite a lot of color there uh, and on the coneflowers talk about these too. I mean, Dianthus, these are all reblooming. They were blooming in May. And now these are all just late season blooms that are showing up. So that's kind of fun. I mean, it is important if you can trim those plants, the surprises that you get later on in the season. And this is no surprise. 
in the back there, that is the Agastache, meant to be queen nectarine. That plant, in addition to, of course, my Alstroemeria that I talk about a lot, that is one of the longest blooming uh, perennials in this garden. Uh, this is queen nectarine. We also have royal raspberry, and they have been blooming since sometime, I believe, late May, early June, all the way through the summer. We haven't done any deadheading on them, no trimming. They just continue to go and show. Oh, in the back here, well, we'll, we'll be able to show you here a little bit the, um, the Agastache, the pink one. Royal, I think it's Royal Raspberry. So that's a beauty. The Salvia, these are the Profusion Series Salvia. These bloom in May. They've been trimmed back and beautifully flowering again here in September. Little Lime Punch Hydrangeas, getting a little tired at the end of the season. But man, if you remember looking at the videos from earlier on this summer, they were just gorgeous. So a lot of salvia poking through. The annuals here still holding on. We've got the mini vista yellow. We have the persimmon. There's Nemesia mulberry, uh, aromance mulberry. The bleeding hearts still going strong in full sun all summer long. Those are the pink diamond bleeding hearts. Great kind of a grayish blue foliage with the pink flowers. I guess here's another one that has bloomed all summer long. And it is of course now sedum season being that it's fall. A lot of times uh, many of the sedum, not all sedum, but many season, many sedum come into their color in the fall or late summer. And this is a mass planting of, I think there's about five in here of the rock and round pop star sedum, super low growing, makes a great border plant. And it's just, it adds a nice splash of fresh color to the late summer, uh, late summer garden because this wasn't blooming earlier on in the season. Heuchera, you know, the foliage color of the corbels or heuchera. That's something that's always putting on a show because of its foliage. Oh, in this patch up on top of the hill, we kind of just put them up there just to kind of let them go and see what they did. The hoopla vivid orchid uh, super tunias are doing fabulous there in the ground. It's kind of a mass planting. Anemone, another great fall blooming perennial. So if you're looking for a perennial that starts off maybe about mid to late August, goes into the fall, anemone is definitely something that puts on a show. These are about three foot tall. And this is a mass planting here of, I think there's about five plants here as well. Um, if we can see, uh, get up on top of the hill there, there's a clematis blooming and that is the Jolly Good Clematis. We'll go in and take a closer look at Jolly Good. Jolly Good blooms usually the end of June, beginning of July here in Michigan, and it did. It put on a beautiful show of colors, uh, but we went ahead and gave it a little trim, and this is all of the new growth blooming again with these beautiful flowers. We don't have a lot of Clematis that we have in our gardens usually that we see putting on that fall show, but that is just really beautiful. Here we have the Miss Violet butterfly bush, and these were these have been in the ground probably about a year now, so they're not to their true full potential for height yet. But just look at this massive coloration of blooms. Now again, nice and fragrant. I'm smelling the, the butterfly bush as I'm just standing here. Uh, Miss Violet can get about four foot tall, and you can see the monarch just kind of checking it out, waiting for its landing zone. Uh, but about four foot tall when it's mature. Um, as well as Miss Molly, which again, Miss Molly is a little short right now because recently planted, but I love those vi vibrant magenta blooms on Miss Molly. And it's a nice fragrant butterfly bush. You know, not all plants or all flowers, you get just that overwhelming sense of fragrance. 
butterfly bushes, in my opinion, are one of those that do give you just a made just amazing fragrance um, added to the garden. So this side of the garden bed is a little rough and we had a lot of big equipment and such coming in this area this summer to work on um, putting the cement patio up against the greenhouse. So they were kind of trampsing on the plants and running over them and stuff. So we'll work on this garden side of this bedside next year and get it looking good. Um, but in the meantime, the patio has been laid and that way we can run um, lifts or tractors or whatever next to the greenhouse if we have to get plastic put on. Uh, and then in front of that, we did a huge garden bed that's, I think it's about eight foot by about, maybe six, six to eight foot by about 150 foot long. Uh, I thought it would have been planted up by now, but other projects come in, you know, and just kind of mess up the plans. So I'm thinking this fall, this area will get planted up we don't want to go with many high plants though because we want to make sure that we're not interfering with airflow into the greenhouse uh, because it's important we keep the airflow in there it just helps keep our team cooler as they're working so we'll see what rod's got planned i'm sure there'll be hydrangeas in the mix um, i'd love to hear if you have any ideas of what you think should go in that garden bed or maybe things that i haven't talked about because we don't have them in our garden that you would like us to plant so you can kind of watch it and see it grow so I'm open to ideas at this point making our way along uh, uh, Brandywine Viburnum so I don't talk a lot about Viburnum because I'm gonna be very honest I feel like Viburnum are just kind of one of those plants that I personally don't know a lot about and there's so many different kinds of Viburnums like so many different families of Viburnums that you know you need a male and a female to get them to bloom and I don't know it's just it's a tricky one for me but i do like to talk about brandywine viburnum because brandywine doesn't need a male or female it just does its thing so right now this plant was planted recent so it's not big yet but what i like about brandywine and we'll have to watch it as the fall goes on is this foliage is going to turn a really vibrant kind of purple shade it's super glossy and um, there's a few little berries on it right now and these berries have beautiful pink clusters they're going to also turn purple so they get really gorgeous clusters of berries on them and this whole plant will be filled with berries when it's mature so it's just it's a very neat fun viburnum that i feel like we've grown it for years here at the greenhouse um, but when we put the butterfly house up we had to rip out we had a huge one we had to rip it out um, so i'm like we need another one in the garden so we'll keep talking about this one as it continues to grow and just show you what a great plant it is for the late summer co uh, color in the garden. All right, what else do we got? Another sunshine blue Caryopteris blooming, the nice fall color. Uh, Wajila, I haven't talked about this one probably much. Uh, this is Vino Verde. It's a new Wajila. It's a spring bloomer. The foliage on this one is really unique. It's, it's burgundy, but it's got like a green veining going on. So even when it's not in flower, the foliage adds interest into the garden bed. In the back behind it, we've got the Temple of Bloom, uh, Seven Suns flower. That is flowering right now. And right now it's kind of as a shrub form. I'm gonna actually be doing another video here shortly, trimming that thing up into more of a tree form. So I want it to have definitely trunks on it. So we'll be doing another video following up on how to trim your seven suns flower into tree form from shrub form, if that's something you're looking to do. We've got denim and lace and sage advice, Russian sage blooming crema reminiscent crema roses blooming right now japanese beetles are loving it this is a pussy willow called black cat that's going to get ripped out soon because you can see it's super ugly super sprawling here's twigs that they cut off of it because it was just going everywhere bugs are loving it so it's we don't sell that plant anymore so out with it it's gonna go monarda more monarda blooming this is not the normal time of year for monarda and we are gonna get drenched in just a second i can see the rain off in the field <laughs> can you see it lynn as it's coming in wow all right 
we're gonna stop but we'll be back when this rainstorm is done wow under the entrance right now so i'm staying dry but that came on fast we had no indication that the rain was even coming until we were like wet so we will be continuing we've got one or two more gardens to show you through so stay tuned third time's the charm right we're gonna head back out to the gardens hope we don't get rained on again um, but we do have some really fun things i want to show you uh, before this video is over so let's head back on out to the gardens so where we left off the last thing i wanted to talk to you about in this garden is the oregano drops of jupiter so it's got great chartreuse yellow foliage beautiful dark purple flowers the flowers are pretty much all done and spent for the season uh, but even the you know what's left here after the flowers are done blooming is really pretty vibrant up against that chartreuse yellow foliage so drops of jupiter oregano this one is fairly new planted in the garden so it hasn't started to spread and take over yet um, but i do want to tell you that is a plant that is a spreader so make sure you're giving it plenty of space to go uh, because it's going to go we'll check out the back side of the waterfall here And I'm really kind of nervous because I'm not trusting this weather right now. I mean, now the sun is out and it's gorgeous, but as I look off in that direction, it's a super dark cloud. So I'm hoping that's the one that just hit us and we'll be good for the rest of the day. So we'll see. Uh, but I think the sun is putting a little extra sparkle on the flowers. Uh, so here's the back side of the waterfall bed. A lot of hydrangeas in this space. Most of these were in their absolute prime around the 4th of July. Um, we left the spent blooms on because even though they're done uh, with their prime color, I still think they add a lot of nice interest into the garden. Here we have a wajila. This is the Sonic Bloom Pink Wajila. This one blooms about three times throughout the season here in Michigan. So this is at its third round of blooms. Uh, the first round obviously has the most color, uh, but to get any color past its first um, cycle of blooms, I think is a really added bonus and I talk about that a lot bonus blooms are blooms that are you know not the initial bloom cycle but cycles that go on throughout the season so kind of a lot of color here for the sonic bloom pink wajila for this late in the season and oh man if there is a plant that you just got to fall in love with it's got to be this firelight hydrangea I love firelight hydrangea and how can you not I mean look at this beautiful coloration this in addition to that quick fire fab we opened the the video with this plant is just I think uh, absolute what, what do I even want to say that I'm, I'm speechless the Heidi doesn't go speechless very often but this plant this color it starts off white it ages to this beautiful magenta color and these blooms they're so crisp so clean and so pink right now now I know those of you in the south, this might not be what you experience with your firelight hydrangea. And I'm truly sorry. But for those of us in the north, this is what we get. And this is something that absolutely is a standout in the garden. A hardy hydrangea blooms off of the new growth. So we can trim it in the fall or in the uh, spring. And if I wanted to take this down to two foot next year in the spring, I'm fine. It'll still bloom. And wow, this, this is just a beauty. I mean, what do you think about the firelight hydrangea? What, do you have it in your garden? Do you love it? A few more hydrangeas over here. We've got the Incredibles. A couple extra blooms kind of blooming off the Incredible late in the season there. A little small. Typically the blooms are much larger, but those again, bonus blooms coming off of Incredible. Uh, the Tough Stuff hydrangea, the Mountain hydrangea. This bloomed earlier in the season and it's putting on a bunch of new growth. It's essentially buried all of its old blooms from earlier in the season. So it's trying to put on some additional blooms here, which we're getting them. We're getting a few additional blooms, but I just don't think the season here uh, in Michigan is gonna be long enough to give us a full coverage um, of blooms. We're not gonna trim this back because this blooms off of old and new growth. So we wanna leave you know, all these all these stems here because essentially next year's flowers are going to come off of the tips of these plants so we're going to leave that leave that there all right let's head on over to the bed here see what's going on 
there's just so much information in this video and uh, for those of you who have stuck with me this long I thank you um, you're you're my true fans my true my true viewers uh, because there has there has been a lot of information things that are blooming in here we're able to see that Queen Nectarine Agasachi more up close and personal in this bed and it's doing fabulous it smells amazing it's a hyssop kind of smells like anise candy if you're familiar at all uh, also in this bed we have a lot of the new varieties for 2024 the new annuals uh, we've got the white scavola whirlwind white that's an improved variety uh, we've got the pink cashmere superbina still putting on a few flowers Obviously you just saw it just downpoured in rain. So these petunias, they don't look very exciting after a rain. They always look like we do kind of weather, weather drenched, um, but they're doing good. For this late in the season, they are doing good. Sweet potato vine. Have you used sweet potato vine as a ground cover? You can see here, this one I believe is the Red Hawk, makes a great ground cover. And it's a beautiful coloration too of the foliage. Our berry poppins, um, Ilex or Holly, they have got the berries on them. So they are raring to go for winter. Those are going to lose their leaves. And then in the winter, the red berries are gonna remain. So that is a very important shrub in this bed because it's one of the only ones that gives us winter interest. And last year, I was just so impressed with that plant and all of the vibrancy that those berries brought to this garden bed. Uh, we've got the uh, cherry drop coleus, and you can see that's kind of wandering its way through the garden. Uh, one thing we noticed with cherry drop, it's very vigorous. So each of these little plantings is only one plant, and you can see how much ground it's covering. We've got the superbina, uh, oh, royal cherry burst, and that's doing fabulous here in the ground. Um, as I pointed out in other videos, the royal cherry burst before it had the pink and the white stripe and on occasion you'd see some of these lighter flowers well people were kind of getting upset when they were seeing those lighter flowers so now what um, the goal is of this plant is to have more consistently the inconsistencies if that makes sense so you're noticing now there's a lot more of the two different looks going on on one plant and that's very intentional and i think it looks really cool just seeing kind of two different plants essentially in one making our way around the corner we've moved all these aqua pots off of the pathway uh, as you can see we've dug out along the pathway um, we're going to put rocks in there just small rocks and then set the aqua pots on the rock that way they're not taking up the pathway because we felt like it was really narrowing the pathway by having these on so we're just going to put rocks along the edge that way you can see there's some drainage issues there there's a lot of little puddling of water going on and that way we don't have to worry so much about that drainage issue either because it'll just be rocks on top of the water so these will set inside these to be honest have been neglected for probably the last three weeks um, we haven't been giving tender loving care to them because we've just it's you know how projects go sometimes they just sit and that's what's happening here so these will be getting dumped shortly so they don't look great uh, along this bed here again things are looking good but they're looking tired right to every season to every garden has its season and this garden season is certainly not fall uh, but the annuals they're holding in they're giving color they're holding in they just are looking tired how many of you are feeling tired i mean it's been a long summer it's been hot for many of us I'm sure that you know having to keep on top of the water and the fertilizer at times you probably just felt tired and that's how the plants are feeling they are feeling tired so they've done beautiful for us and it's okay they can be tired and they can be ready to kind of go to sleep opening act flox this was blooming in May look at the beautiful rebloom right now because we gave it a nice trim Sangria, uh, many of us uh, sweet sangria is doing great. We've got it mixed in there with that cherry burst verbena. We've got some more of the uh, sweet potato vine kind of mangling through the ground. 
this aqua pot i said to rod uh, just a couple nights ago i'm like we're going to redo this one again not often do i say let's do that again because it's always nice to try new things but this aqua pot did fabulous this year with the coffee cups colocasia the cherry cordial begonia the super tunia vista latte uh, there's some pink polka dot plant or some white polka dot plant in there we probably don't need to do that again uh, but these three plants, the begonia, the super tunias, and the coffee cups, that did fabulous. Pugster, uh, Pugster blue butterfly bush, doing amazing. Some shasta daisies, look at that, rebloom. Those were trimmed back, and the thing is loaded with buds. So that happily gave us another cycle of flowers this year. Another Pugster, and as we make our way through, a lot of this is going to be kind of a repeat because symmetry, you know, symmetrical, that's kind of my style. So a lot of this is going to be what we've seen already. But there's two things I'm going to show you. Three things. Three things I'm going to show you. No, but Thulinbergia vine. I typically am not a big fan of Thulinbergia vine because it doesn't do much. But this planter this year, this has really outdone anything I've ever seen before. And that's a lot of flowers. So that kind of made me change my tune a little bit about the Thulinbergia vine. Uh, that's orange slice. The second thing I was gonna show you, the cherry drop coleus. When I said earlier, it's a monster, this here is going to prove to you what a monster this plant is. Now I'm guessing there's probably three of them planted here. So in all fairness, this is three plants, but even as such, this is a lot of coverage from just three of the coleus plants. And we're gonna end on my favorite. Here we have the Alstermeria Inca Ice Peruvian Lily. Probably, you know, I talked about the Agasachis being long blooming. I talked about the Pink Diamond Dicentra being long blooming. Alstermeria Inca Ice also very long blooming perennial in the garden. Excellent cut flower. We're hoping, hoping, we will be able to get them again for 2024. Uh, we weren't able to get them this year. So watch in 2024 for availability of the Inco Ice Ultimaria. This was a lot of information. Thanks for sticking with me. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to have you leave them below. If you're new to the station, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.